Hey guys, welcome to the final video of putting together the manual transmission, the 3D printed design by Eric the Pool Boy. In prior videos, we built section one with the first four gears and section two with the fifth gear and reverse. Now we're going to move on and build this third part with the shifter, rod connected to the shift linkage, another rod connected to the shift forks. And after all this, we should be able to rotate the input shaft and use our shifter to change gears. And if we're lucky, <laughs> be able to go into reverse and as well as fifth. Let's make sure that we have everything we need to build the shift linkage and install it into the manual transmission. First, we need everything we've built in the previous videos, section one and section two. We're gonna to need to print out transmission housing number three, which has two bearings. It will go through the top shaft and the counter shaft built in section one and section two together. We also might want this output shaft, which will connect to the top shaft, like this, and come out of the end of the transmission housing three. And with this, you'll be able to tell whether the top shaft is actually moving counterclockwise or clockwise or not at all in neutral. And this has a pair of set screws and nuts. Also, you might want to print out these optional housing covers. This one goes over section one like this, and this other one goes over section two like this. Some folks install magnets on here so that they stay attached and easily detach as well. I like to see the exposed gear, so I'm not gonna go that far, but you certainly could. Next up is going to be the core of this uh, video, is how to put together the forks and these forks attached to the rods that will move these gears back and forth. Then we have a shift linkage which has a tiny rod that selects the forks and thus changes the gears. Finally we've got a shifter base that will be installed inside of transmission housing 3 and be controlled using the shift ball the shifter and this ball actually came in two pieces a top piece and a bottom piece that I glued together when I put it on this rod and this will go up inside transmission housing 3 and be the final shifter and finally, we've got the shifter base that will keep the ball secured on housing part number three, like this. So all right, let's get started. Let's build this thing. Now we're gonna pick up where we left off after building section two. When we finished, we left these two shift forks untightened and two rods that are supposed to attach to one fork each are completely free and moving. The first fork has a hole here which makes it easy to access and tighten it against its rod but this second one requires a very long allen key wrench to go through and tighten it here from the bottom. Unfortunately I don't have that wrench so what I need to do um, is take apart section 2 and gain access to these forks again in order to tighten them. And now we have access to the forks. And you can take carefully take everything apart So the first shift collar can be easily tightened through this hole 
So that's fine. And we can leave that back where it was. But this second fork will have to be done separately and it will need to be tightened on the rod outside of the model and put back in. Keep taking apart the assembly so that we can get to the shift fork. There's washers all over the place. And now we can see that the rod's loose and that's what we need to tighten. And Eric the pool boy has some measurements in his PDF. I have the same thing over here written down. And we can just take the rods that are the same lengths in the PDF and measure it and tighten the screw on the rod. After that, we can start the long process of putting everything back together. And one thing to note is that while you have everything split apart, make sure you check all the gaps. Some of the bearings might be pushed in too much or pushed out, and you can compensate by adding extra washers or taking out washers in certain places. Make sure everything spins correctly and freely, and Make sure the things that aren't supposed to spin, don't spin. And uh, put everything back together. And one more thing to note is that when you put Transmission Housing 2 back on, make sure all the gears um, are stuck in place and don't move. And you might have to add some extra washers too. Alright, let's put this back together. At this point, we can also tighten the set screw for the other shift fork that's directly accessible through this hole, or we can do it at a later time as well. Now hold everything together so it's pinched together and double check that the shift forks still move, but all the other gears are solid and in place. It's easy to forget to um, make sure this last gear is in place. Looks like everything is pretty much good. And if we move these if you move one rod, it should move only one shift fork. And make sure that they can both grab on to their adjacent gears. And now we can continue putting everything back together. Let's take transmission housing 3 and put it on to this section. And we're going to check to make sure that all the gears don't move. Okay, so now all the gears shouldn't be moving, there shouldn't be anything too loose. And if not, this is the opportunity to make sure everything is solid. Now we're going to go back and finally tighten everything in section 2 before we start working with transmission housing 3 again. Alright, now we can double check that section 2 is back. We should be able to move 
the fifth gear and the reverse gear collar back and forth and then we can check our other rods make sure those move properly you might need to rotate the input shaft and then the other one down here Okay, looks good. Next, we need to install the shift forks onto the rods that we just tightened. Now, this one goes on the top rod, and this one goes on the lower rod, and they'll both end up stacking like this. As a result, one of the tool tips that Eric provides is to make sure to shave off some excess so these can move over each other as the rods are moving. So first make sure everything is in a neutral position. The output shaft shouldn't be moving. Line up all the forks so that all the slots line up in a perfect vertical manner. And then from the outside, we can tighten one of the forks. Now tighten the other one. It's a little bit tough because now you have this piece, you have to sort of pull up a little bit until the hole is exposed and carefully tighten it. Go back to neutral by moving all the shift collar gears and double check your work. Next, we're going to install everything we need into housing 3 that can't be installed later. So first, you can take the shifter and insert it all the way down into the uh, holder. And at a kind of sideways angle, take the rod and stick it through. Stick it through until it comes out the back. And make sure, of course, to use the one without the bearing, the hole without the bearing. Also, at this time, you can take part of the shifter base and bring up the ball and tighten it. We can put the other part of the shifter base next. In the next part, <laughs> take the other part of the transmission and now we're going to stick it all together. Once all the gears stop moving and everything is tight, put back a couple of the long screws to make sure everything is secure. Okay, adjust everything back to the neutral position just to make sure nothing shifted. For the most part, it looks good, a little bit off, but it's all right. Next, we're gonna take the shift linkage 
and attach it to the rod that we stuck through transmission housing 3. Before that, take the tiny rod that's going to go and adjust these forks and put it into the linkage. One of the tips Eric the Pool Boy mentioned was flattening out an area on this rod so that this set screw is tightening against something flat rather than round. I skipped that step because this model for me is mostly a demonstration and I won't be hooking it up against an actual engine. And he also recommends flattening out this part here where um, this shift part, the one where the ball is inserted into, is also tightening against the flat area too. But I'm going to skip that as well. Now go back and make sure everything is in neutral position. We can also take our output, our output shaft, and also plug that in. Now when we're completely in neutral, the output shaft should not be moving at all. Take the shifter ball and move it into the position, the final position that it should be in. And the bottom part of the shifter ball will move the shift uh, linkage part and now use an allen wrench to tighten it. Now the only thing left is to put the rest of the shifter base back so you can test your shifter if you move it side to side you should be able to switch between the various gears so if you move side to side you should be able to switch between the three rods if you move back and forth, you should be able to engage a gear. And also note that <laughs> right now, this gear actually slipped down due to gravity. So sometimes you have to adjust it. Here's reverse and fifth gear working. Third and fourth. And first and second. So along the way you might have to open this up and tweak it a little bit more. But that's about it in a nutshell. Congratulations. And you can also use these holes back here to keep the rails um, more tight so they don't fall off just by tilting the model. As you can see, the gears move down just as I'm rocking it. Finally, you can take your covers and put those on at this point as well. So, congratulations. Thanks for watching. Pat yourself on the back. See you later.